Today we've picked up ourselves a Saab 93 Estate. A 93 Aero Estate, which really like the look of this thing. Love the colour. It's a very strange colour. Um, we thought it was black at first. Now we're realising in this light it's not actually black. It's a very dark fucking green. It should, this should be good than this. The, the, the Saab 93 was one of those cars when it was released, you knew it was going to be a line that stayed around for a while. Mm. Um, and it did. Yeah, he puts air fresheners up here, but one of them caught my eye. I pushed it further in, but it was still cry mm. out. So I thought, I'll have a look. And then I pulled this down and I thought, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this was this So was a, um, I guess you can clip that to do that, which nearly takes your head off when you do it. So you can have that. Yeah. So your sun stops you, but then also put your sun visor down. You nearly, you nearly shielded, aren't you? Yeah. That's that was pretty much the idea. Yeah. But what a good idea that is. My my Citroen C5 had exactly the same thing. Yeah. I still miss that C5. I like that. And when they're all fastened up and folded up, it's not as if it's all oh, hanging loose and it's rattling because there's two. It? It's just all mm. fine. When I first climbed in, mm. this interior. Brilliant interior, absolutely brilliant. Um, for me, it's going on a bit like year 75. Yeah. Because you've got these light colours and it's leather and nice. It's a very warm, inviting, inviting interior, is this? And look at those back seats. Yeah. It's like a sofa. The thing I would say, and, and this is just by sitting in it now. Yeah. This actually feels um, safer. The 75 does. And the 75 is a heavy Yeah, it's, it's, isn't it just a thing we have where you know they're all about we're going to make it sure it's done better, safer, and all that. But yeah. don't you get that feeling you're in a very safe, strong car? Yes. You look at the look at the pillars here by the windscreen. The that's, chunky are they? I mean, that's we, we, not even taking into account the door. Yeah. That's the thickness of the 75. Yeah. And then you've got the door as well. It's that, it's, it's like that. We're going about the Saab bonkers advertising and now they claim everything's just like a fighter jet. It even says aero on the back. Yeah. Uh, but one thing straight away, and when I was going to start the vehicle up, I looked for a normal place to put a set of keys. And mm. then we discovered that they're down here. By the handbrake. Again, a bit like a fighter plane. Yeah. You won't, yeah, yeah, everything's all so different. You wouldn't expect your ignition. Do you know why they did here. that? I've no idea, is it just bonkers or was no, there a purpose? It's, it, there's a purpose behind it. When you put a key into the side of the ignition, yeah, yeah. where's your knee in the event of an accident? Well, it's right in that area, isn't it's it? It's right yeah. below the key. So if you had an accident, and even a slight one, it shoved your knee forward. Oh, yeah. You could have a kneecap injury from your key. From your keys in a barrel, yeah. Yeah. So moving the barrel and the keys away from that area, makes it safer for you. Now the thing is, why isn't this a trend that most cars follow? Because I think that's a really good feature, having your keys there. It's different, well it's different because other cars don't do it, but it's, um, it just makes it more interesting driving. There's something else to do, aren't you? Yeah. You're thinking, well that's different. Time to take it for a test drive. Yeah, this Saab really, to me, is still feels as tight as a drum to drive, doesn't mm. it? It feels, it feels really good. You can tell that you're on a bit of 19 inch wheels and you can tell you're on low profile tires, yeah, especially if we were on like this. Yeah, it's a bit of a bump. I won't say it's too harsh. No, it's quite it's actually really, not bad. I really won't say it's too harsh at all. I think it's one of those swapping it for something like a 15 inch alloys or 15 inch wheels. Mm. That would help a lot. Yes, it would, yeah. Um, but it's also, is this you know, is, is this kind of ride going to be too much for you? Yeah, there will be that, won't there? Um, but do you know, it's a. I, we said, we said it's a. This is a 2.3. Turbo. Yeah. And as you can see, that's not really pushing it. No, and that's climbing uphill as well. And 
we've got a fair size car here, it's got a nice bit of weight to it and yeah, it, it really can move. That's good. It sounds nice. Mind you, I did notice the, the exhaust at the back's quite big. It has got a chunky exhaust on the back, hasn't it? So, interesting point on this car. LPG? It is LPG this. Which, again, very surprised <laughs> when we picked the vehicle up uh, to find it was LPG. So, go on, left here. As you can tell, it is very. Yeah, it, it, you, you only need the slightest stab of um, a brake, of, that's a it. brake and it's. It's throwing, on, throwing all on it. Yeah. It's. Um, I'd say it's a question of uh, the one thing getting used to being an automatic as well. You don't sometimes know when that first gear change is going to come, like that one, mm. and you just get a little jolt. Yeah, I mean, in the in the sort of high torque gears. Yeah, and low, well, low, low I, I suppose if you once you get used to it, it'd, it'd be probably fine. It's just that. First question I'm getting. But there's also that sort of style change of driving an automatic to a manual as well. There is, um, and you don't think there would be at first, but there is a, a total change. But yeah, the, this car comes across as a really good car. Massively spacious. Mm. I do like the look of the back seat. Yeah, and I'm just wondering what sort of space we would get in a vehicle like this if you popped the back seats down, what you'd have as a boot, because as we've seen. Huge. The boot's already fairly big, isn't it? Yeah. It does stretch back a lot, and uh, with the seats down, I bet you could get some nice stuff in there easy. Oh yeah. Uh, the display when you're driving this, everything's all put into three uh, areas that you see. You've got your turbo and all that, you can see in your revs and your speed, and everything you need is there, rather than split over five gauges. You know what the, the dash actually reminds me of? The whole sort of driver's area. Ford Sierra. Wait, it comes out. When I sat in the passenger seat earlier, I was trying to think what is it reminding me of? And I couldn't. I couldn't it's bring it's it like to a mind. rounded version of what Ford was trying to do with the Sierra. It is. Ah, that's the right. It's. It's very strange. Um, what Saab were doing at the time. In a way, I, 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 I think they sort of, I can see how they've done it, why they've done it, mm -hmm. but they've kind of fold forward in that respect. And it was funny because I mean, Saab are responsible for a lot of the things we have in cars these days. They are. Um, they wasn't ever afraid, Saab, of trying new ideas, were they? No, not at all. I like this engine. I really like this engine. Yes, there's a lot of, at the time you might have thought of being little quirks and things, oh, that's a bit, but the things that's continued in other cars, so there must have been onto the right thing there. Probably stick your foot down on this one. And, <laughs> and this is a test. Oh, well, it can shift. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on LPG as well. Yes. Um, it, when you boot it, it can shift. The question is, would you have one? There's no question. Yes. I'd have one of these easy. Because looking at this, I mean, how could you go wrong? For one, it's an estate. And estate's usually coming very handy. So the chucking stuff in and so on. But I just like it because I've always liked Saabs. And could have not, not like a Saab. I've, uh, Thanks, Ryan. I've always liked Saabs, so really, <laughs> it might sound a bit of a prejudice, I don't know, but I think I was going to like this car before I even picked it up. Yeah. I was definitely going to like this car before I picked it up. The thing I really do like about it, all, uh, the thing I really like about it, though, is it's got, well, it's, it's just so solid. Don't you get that feeling of a, <laughs> I hate to say it, but you get that feeling if someone smacked into you, 
you'd come off the better. Yeah. You, because you feel so well protected in this car. And let's not forget, there's a lot of cars now on the market that's uh, the newer ones and such. And I bet even some of them they they don't feel as safe. No. Or as be, comfortable. Or as comfortable because. Uh, you should have warned me about these seats because these seats are brilliant. You're going to be checking them out, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, and somebody came along and nicked your seats. And, and took your seats and they're now in my house, yeah. But uh, no, same as that, it's just like a sofa on back. Yeah. It's in fact, that, really that good. looks more comfortable than the sofa I've got. <laughs> than the sofa you've got. Uh, yeah, it's. How can you fault a car like this? It's just one of those nice places to be and every time I look around this car I keep thinking oh why did Sam go? Why did they have to go? So that was the Saab uh, Aero Estate the 931 and fantastic yeah, car. Uh, I was totally blown away with this car in a way because for one I wasn't told it were automatic so I got in the vehicle and what and I'm sort of had to not say learn but get used to and it's been a very pleasant drive. It's performed well. Um, I can't fault the car. I've found lots of surprises in it as you have seen in the video. And so did you. The night vision. <laughs> the night vision. We found the night vision panel button. Uh, night panel, yeah. And Saab always did. Wonderful feature of that, but we still we've got issues. Well not issues, but we still what was its main purpose? We sort of have an idea, don't we? Yeah. But uh, Rather nice panel and things like that. It is typically sad and it's a really a cabin to be in. I really think that the key word with this is sad. Safe. Yeah. It's it is a lovely tank. I happily and it's becoming a bit of a saying of mine. I happily drive this all day long. <laughs> it's gonna be my key saying, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, yeah. I think the other thing as well, which you might be surprised, this is also your, it was your first automatic. It was. But also, it was your first LPG car. Yes, as we must point out, as you've seen the video, I've uh, a fuel LPG. Damn good idea. Yeah. And this is something we're actually going to look at later on as well. Yes, it is. It's something we're going to be touching on. Uh, so we're glad this car was actually like this. Again, another surprise I didn't know until right in the last moment it was uh, LPG. And Pick and shift. We liked it. We really liked it. And it's a 2.3 litre engine. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. Turbocharged. We had it in sport mode, which you were saying on the dashboard sport <laughs> uh, as we were driving it. And uh, yeah, it can move. It's a nice vehicle. Ever look at a Saab think, should I buy one? Really, the answer to that is yes. It's, it's a, it's a well built, reliable, and uh, just a superb all round car. It is. You sort of really do feel like you are in an aeroplane though. There's these same little touches yeah. that I say you're in a fighter plane now. And <laughs> you want to feel like you are as well. So, somewhat really, yeah, if we got the bonkers advertising we start. They did have some, I won't say crazy ideas, I'd say forward thinking ideas. Which I will only say one thing about Sam, which was still here today. That is this wonderful Saab, all nicely done and sorted. And then we have a suggestion of going back to my friend Andy, but thanks for him allowing us to use this work in the video. Thank you, Andy. So, yeah, all covered. Wonderful Saab.